Pasta is confusing. It comes in many shapes and forms, all with various histories, provenances, and usages. So hopefully this guide kind of helps you out and helps bring a little spice back to your kitchen, especially if you're starting to get a little tired of just using spaghetti all the time. Fresh pasta is usually made from various types of flours and egg, and that's rolled out, kneaded, and then eventually it's thinned out and then cut up into the shapes that you see at a pasta shop or at an Italian restaurant. Dry pasta is usually made from a very specific style of wheat, and it's called durum wheat semolina and just some water. And most of the dry pastas you'll find in the supermarket shelves are usually made from those two ingredients. But then they vary in different things. They, well, nowadays, because of all these resurgence of health and the importance of health, a lot of people look for pastas that are made from quinoa flour or are made from brown rice flour or made from lentils or beans flour. So basically you just need flour and water wherever that flour comes from as long as it binds with water and then can be made into a shape. If we're looking at traditional Italian style dry pasta, you have still a lot of choices. So we're going to go through all of those one by one. It's important to know the usage. Spaghetti, as I said a while ago, is probably the most popular one, especially in the Philippines because of our Pinoy spaghetti that uses spaghetti. Or in Italy, the bolognese, which is very popular, thick kind of like tomato sauce, usually with some sort of ground beef uh, or ground meat inside. People use it for carbonara also. Um, it really comes down to what your personal tastes are. Macaroni was previously made really popular, obviously because of the American mac and cheese, um, which is a baked dish. They have a small elbow tubular kind of shape, uh, which make them very versatile. So usually the shape will dictate, hopefully, well not dictate, but will kind of give you hints as to what the sauce can be. So with something in like this, you should have kind of like some sauce that goes inside the macaroni, which is why they're great for soups, because people like making sure that the soup goes in through it. Um, and whatever sauce that you have, like that's why a nice kind of thick cheesy sauce is perfect as well, because it not only coats the outside, but it also somehow kind of penetrates in the inside, uh, making great for like casserole dishes or baked dishes. Talking about putting things inside other things, uh, penne is probably one of the most famous for that. You can find it right over here. Penne have these basically kind of like a long tubular shape with some ridges outside. Usually when you have pasta shapes that have ridges, those are made to kind of cling and make sure that the sauce kind of sticks to the pasta. And then the inside just helps you kind of think about, you know, what you can fit inside. That's why I like eating penne with like ragus or really heavy, thick, meaty sauces, because it can kind of really just get connected and make a really delicious, comforting dish. Fusilli are the ones with these spiral shapes. Here you kind of have a tricolored one. It usually comes from vegetable powders, so yeah. Green from spinach powder. The beet powder gives it kind of like that reddish color, and then the yellow obviously is just a regular dry pasta. Uh, Fusilli is great for sauces that have vegetables, cream, or meat, so anything that needs to kind of cling on to that. Speaking of kind of weird shapes that you might have, they're called the farfales, which are usually kind of like those bow tie pastas. So more or less the same function in terms of the sauces that you can use with it. Um, it's just like a fun little shape to have as well. If you're looking for a spaghetti-like strand or length, then linguine for me is the way to go, especially if you're someone that likes kind of creamy sauces. If you like making, for example, a black truffle cream sauce, a linguine is perfect because it's really long, but it's also kind of flat. Um, so it just helps get that sauce all over the pasta and just makes it you know, like, you know those very pretty plates of pasta you see where everything's kind of combined in the middle and it just looks delicious? Linguini is one of those that just always hits the spot. One of the last ones we'll talk about today, lasagna. So funnily enough, a lot of people think that lasagna is the dish, but it's not necessarily the dish. Lasagna is literally these strands of pasta that you see in there. That's what you call lasagna. Obviously, it was popularized because people started making lasagna, which is a baked casserole uh, pasta dish with layered, I don't know, usually it's tomato sauce, some sort of white sauce. Um, a lot of people do different variations of it with the, the vegetables or the meats that you find inside. But another trick um, and a tip that I have for you with lasagna is what you can do is, if you're looking for those long fat noodle strands that we call parpadele, um, which sometimes you won't find in a dry version, what you can do is actually boil the lasagna wait for it to get nice and soft, and then you can actually cut it through the middle, um, and then you get these long, beautiful strands of pasta that you can use as parpadelle. 
Finally, if you're looking for like a very quick dish, a very quick cook, you can go for something like the Capellini Tagliati, which is a tiny, 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 tiny noodle. Um, it almost looks like an angel hair, which are, are noodles that are usually, I think it's 0.031 inches or something like that, so it's tiny. And the great thing about that is that it just cooks really quickly. Usually in two to three minutes, your pasta is cooked. With this kind of pasta and angel hair, usually the simpler the better. Well, this you can use in soup, for example, but an angel hair you'd use for an agli olio, which is basically just oil and garlic or really light tomato sauce, something you don't need to do too much to and something you don't have to work too much for. I know that was a lot, but hopefully that helps you kind of navigate how to use all of these. The best way with food is always to just try it, see if you like it. Honestly, in terms of flavor, um, if you compare this side by side with no sauces, the differences will be extremely subtle and that will be more of a brand preference than anything else. But what's cool about pasta and dry pasta is the usage for the sauces that you might make. So it's really all about a texture thing and all about that, you know, thinking about, okay, how am I gonna eat this pasta? Is it a pasta that I'm gonna take a fork put it in the pasta, twirl it around, and put it in my mouth, in which case it has to be a pasta that carries and is coated perfectly with sauce. Or is it the pasta, of, like for example, a fusilli, where I'm just take the fork and just stick it in and bring it out, where I'll look for some bits and pieces of meat and vegetables to be clinging to the pasta as well. So it's all about functionality, um, which I think is really cool, and you can really geek out on that. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you guys next time.